What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. Today we're going to talk about budget amplifiers. Yes, we're going to talk about five budget amps that we've tested and these are Wilson Audio approved. First up, Rockville RXM T2 two channel marine amp. Currently this is available for 130 bucks. Back when we purchased it, it was 115. Just you know how prices go, they go up over time. According to Rockville at two ohms, this amp does 600 by two. Or Bridget, it does 1600 by one at four ohms, which is not right because if you look at the other ratings, two times 400 at four ohms, two times 600 at two ohms, and it should say 1200 by one bridged at four ohms and actually does all those numbers. This is a really slick looking amp for 130 bucks, pretty good price. The fact that it is marine rated and it has all the adjustments here you need inputs and outputs gain base eq low pass you can do it full range if you want it is a class d amplifier but again here is the test results you can see it does right at rated pretty much every ohm load for every test and for 130 bucks it's gonna be hard to beat this it's extremely powerful for a two channel amp and pretty small to boot fits not quite in the palm of your hand but it'll fit pretty much anywhere you can see the board there is conformal coated protected from your salt sand sea etc so again rockville being on the list here recommendations up number one how you like that yep turn up that gain so now let's talk about the good stuff yeah the power output meets its ratings it's marine rated i like the aesthetics i think it looks pretty slick value can't be beat for the price could be better it could have a bass remote it has no subsonic filter and yeah the brand stigma it is a rock bill so you have to explain to your friends go watch big d's video he says it's okay <laughs> number two nvx vadm1 500 watt mini amp mono block this one goes currently for 170 bucks and we tested this one a while back with the smaller version the one the year before the mvpa1 but this one's pretty slick because it has a subsonic filter. It actually has a remote base knob included. And yeah, it's pretty small. Fits pretty much in the palm of your hand. Has a really nice construction to it. And you can see it has four gauge there for power and ground. And the remotes on eight gauge have no idea why need one that big. But the speaker terminals are only 12 gauge. So you just have to live with that. So we look at the results. You can see on the right here, it's rated 180 at 4 ohms, 320 at 2, 500 at 1, and pretty much got to the rated power at every ohm load. So we like this amp. Uh, NVX amps overall seem to, be, seem to do pretty well. They seem to have pretty good reliability. And again, I'm not paid by any of these companies to say this. This is all my experience and also the commenters on my videos who have these amplifiers and have left me comments. So... I don't recommend anything here that I get a lot of negativity about. All these amps I'm going to talk about are ones that people seem to like and seem to be reliable. Now let's talk about the good stuff for the MVX VAD M1. Power for the size. It includes a base remote. It is marine rated. Used on your UTVs, side-by-sides, all that good stuff. And the value. That's 170 bucks, but hey, you're getting a pretty good amp. Now, could be better the base remote connection. I don't like it's 3.5 millimeters because they will pop out. It has no remote clip indicator. And again, the brand stigma, who is NVX? Some of your friends aren't going to know. Next up, Kenwood KACM 3004. This amp has been out for a while. Currently, it's available for $124. As of most Amazon listings, this may change. You can see the amp here, 6.5 by 3.9 by 1.75 inches, about the size of a large smartphone as far as the width and height go. Of course, the depth, this is gonna be quite a bit thicker than your smartphone unless you have an old brick phone from the old school days. <laughs> but yeah, uh, MSRP, 199 bucks. You can see the connections there for the power ground and remote. The speaker output though is on this harness. Have to use this Molex style plug, which is water resistant. I wouldn't say waterproof. But then you have to have a way to hook up all these wires. You want to heat shrink them together. As far as the test goes, this thing blew me out of the water. I had no idea that it was going to do as well as it did. I know Kenwood has sold a lot of these thanks to my test. But again, we're independent here. We don't do anything for other people. 
Good stuff. Power for the size. Excellent power output. It is marine rated. Used on your motorcycle, ATV, all that type stuff. And value for a four channel amp. This is a great deal. Could be better. Doesn't have a base remote. That speaker output harness is a bit of a mess. And remove the max power, Kenwood. We don't need that 600 watt max power on there. Nobody wants to see that. All right, now up for number four and number five. Both of these are Pioneer models. One's a monoblock, one is a five channel. And you can see here the GMD9705 is the five channel and the GMD9701 is the monoblock. Now I tested the previous versions of these, but uh, we're gonna talk about the current version. So the 9701 currently goes for about 143 bucks on Amazon again. You can expect that to change based on the wind, temperature, all kind of different things. As far as power ratings go, 500 watts at 4 ohms, 800 watts at 2 ohms, 1200 watts at 1 ohm. So that's good power for most people for doing an average system. Here is the older model, the GMD9601. And you can see inputs and outputs for RCAs, gain, frequency adjustment for your low pass filter and the base remote, which is on that telephone style RJ11 connector, the kind that will not pop out. It does include the base remote and the base cable, four gauge inputs, three 40 amp fuses, and the speaker outputs are approximately eight gauge. The insides of the Pioneer, it uses kind of cheap caps as to be expected in an inexpensive amp, but reliability for these seems to be pretty well. I've heard a lot of good things. Uh, five star car stereo tests a lot of these quality mobile video installs a lot and i don't think they have many problems with them make sure you check qualitymobilevideo.com they tested one of these i'll leave the link in the video description so here are the results you can see it did right at rated at two ohms and one ohm certified 806 and 1106 and had some good dynamic numbers as well which means it has some headroom now let's talk about the things we liked about the amp the good stuff. The power output includes the base remote. Reliability seems good, of course, and the value. What can you say? 1200 watt amp, 140 bucks from a known brand. Yep, can't get wrong there. Could be better. It doesn't have a clip indicator anywhere. No subsonic filter. And while we're complaining, no Tiffany style RCAs. I know it's a budget amp, it's not supposed to have that, but I gotta put some here. I gotta have three, can't just have two. So, there you go, no Tiffany RCAs. Now, number five, we're gonna go with the GMD9705, which is the five channel Pioneer amp. And this one goes for, it lists for 350, but you can usually find it on Amazon between 200 and 220 bucks. This is what we call a hybrid five channel amp, which means front and rear channels are class AB. The subwoofer channel is class D, rated 75 by four, plus 350 by one or up to 100 by four plus 600 by one at two ohms. And again, we tested the previous version, the 9605. This is just a really a cosmetic difference between the two. And this amp, when I bought it was 193 bucks. Again, Amazon's prices change like the wind. You can set up, you know, a price request on the site and it'll let you know when the price drops. You can see all the switches. It's got more switches than Easy E 64 Impala. You big dummy. But yeah, channel A, you can see here, you got gain, you got frequency adjustment, you have the slope, and you have your inputs for channels A, B, and subwoofer. The amp has four gauge for power and ground. It has eight gauge for the subwoofer output. And it also has about 12 gauge for the front and rear channel output. And again, it includes three 30 amp fuses, so 90 amps worth of fusing, which is just about right for this amp. But all the connections allow for a very clean install, very easily to connect everything. As far as power output goes, when we bridge the front two channels about 300 watts per channel. On the sub channel at four ohms, we got 300 watts using a 40 hertz signal. At two ohms, 526, it was rated 600 watts, so it was a little shy there on the two ohm measurement. But again, these amps, reliable, very good as far as that goes. As far as the price goes, it's tough to beat, you know, around 200 bucks for a five channel amp that will do your entire system, includes a base remote, has decent components inside, again, cheap caps as expected. 
for an amp like this, a budget amp, but um, everything seems to be pretty reliable. It should last you several years, and that's all you can ask for. So what do we think about the good things and the bad things of this amp? We like that it has a remote subwoofer control and it has high level inputs, and I didn't mention here, but the fact the class AB on the front and rear channels, it gives you better sound quality. Could be better, the sub channel did not meet rated power, the really small speaker terminals for the front and rear channels and the tiny Allen wrench that you need to have and keep an extra one of those on tap. All right, guys, there you have it. My top five budget amplifiers that we've tested over the past few years. Hope you guys like videos like this, kind of going over some of the older things that we've tested, some, some things we like that we can recommend. As always, appreciate you guys giving a thumbs up. And as always, for watching my channel. Till next time, Big D. Another video on the way. Till then, I'm out of here. All right, as with all my videos, if you stick around to the end, I always throw some extra content in. And yes, we're going to talk about an extra amp that we didn't talk about. The Smart 3 Tar Amps. This one has got to be on anybody's budget list for under 300 bucks. When I bought it, it was 270, now it's 280, it's still a deal. Subwoofer King hooked us up to his 18s and his Forerunner, and this thing was flexing his whole truck. He was blown away, he says he can get another one. Yeah, it was flexing his whole vehicle. So yeah, I can't wait to see him add another one, but yeah, just a testament to this amp, pretty rock solid. It does have 1.0 inputs, we do appreciate that. The other cool thing people may not realize about these amps is that they do the constant power between 2 ohms down to 1 ohm. You can see here with the result sheet, we got 1900 watts at 4 ohms, we got 3000 at 2 ohms, 3067 at 1.3, 3184 at 1 ohm, and 3152 at 0.8. So even our buddy EXO, I gave him one of these prototype amps that Tar Amps gave me. He needed a car, uh, amp for his girlfriend's car. I said, hey man, check this amp out. See how it works for you. So check his video in the video description. What's going on guys? Just playing here in the OSS Labs. But today, I'm gonna do a little upgrade here to my 2020 Haro Freestyler Master DMC Edition.